Happy Friday! I am so excited to be joining you all again for Tierra's Tips. Today, we are going to be talking about Tierra's Tip for budgeting in your business. Okay, now let me start the conversation by saying I am not a financial expert, okay? I'm not a financial planner or any of the things, but I am a daughter of an accountant, so I think I picked up a few, that's a few things, um, and also I've been a full-time entrepreneur for over a year, so I'm going to talk to you guys about what has worked for me, um, and step number one is figure out what works for you right? So you can offer suggestions, you can offer tips and tricks. Um, and what in the process of figuring out what worked for me, I took a lot of time to really sit down and research, listen to different perspectives, trying out new things um, so that I can figure out what works for me. The only way you're going to be able to do that is trial and error. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but today I want to go into a couple different things that have worked for me. Um, and in hopes of helping you. I got this question from one of my business clients, so I figured it was worth talking about with everyone. If there is a subject you would like my tips on, drop them in the comments. Tierra's tips on what? Okay? Drop it in the comments below. Um, so again, tip number one is you have to figure out what works for you. Tip number two is you have to understand what stage you're in in your business. What do I mean by that, right? So starting off, you're probably going to be side hustling a little bit. Name of the game. Cool. With that, you want to be clear about what, like, what stage are you in. If you're side hustling, great, right? But then when I first transitioned into full-time entrepreneurship, I was a newbie in the full-time entrepreneurship game. My business budgeting looked a lot different. But then also, now that I'm feeling a little bit more established in my business and a little bit more comfortable in my finances from the business, um, I'm in a whole nother stage. So really step two is to take the time to evaluate what stage you're in. Tip number three is if you are a side hustler, what worked for me while I was side hustling is to make sure that every check I was putting something towards the business. I was doing 20% per check um, and I had a separate account. So um, it was a personal account, but I used it as only a business account. So all of my business expenses came from that account um, just to have separation um, and the ability to track those expenses. Um, but with that, I was able to, um, every check I put in 20%. So I started to see how much the business was actually costing, right? Um, so that was huge there as well. Um, but that was for the first two years. As I started to prepare for full-time entrepreneurship, I started making sure that the business was at a minimum covering its own expenses. Um, so if, if if I didn't have the income, I didn't have the expense. I couldn't pay, I couldn't afford it. Right? That's it. Um, and then the money that I was putting towards the business, I got more aggressive with my savings because I knew that was going to be something I had to fall back on. Right? And how much you need saved is really based on your risk tolerance because the reality is it's never going to feel like enough anyway, honestly. Um, but as a single woman with no children, no mortgage, things like that, I knew I had a little bit more risk tolerance, right? Um, I had a little bit more flexibility in my finances. And as I made the transition into full-time entrepreneurship, there were a couple different financial opportunities lined up to be able to help uh, smooth out that transition a little bit. You got to do what works for you. Um, so while you're a side hustling, my biggest recommendation is to put a certain amount towards the business, but keep it separate from your personal funds. You want to get out of the habit of commingling those funds, right? And you also want to get out of the habit of, oh, well, I have it available. What does the business have it available? Okay. Then step number four, when you are a new full-time entrepreneur, money going to get a little funny sometimes. Okay, that is a part of the process. It gets a little rocky, right? Um, and I'm not saying that it has to, but sometimes it does. And I, I think we don't talk about the rockiness enough. Um, so when people make those transitions and it gets rocky, you're like, wait, I'm doing something wrong. No, it's just a part of the process sometimes. In that moment, every penny that I got in um, went towards bills. 
whether it was personal bills or business bills, um, cause I was making that transition. Right. Um, and some of that even included some cuts that I had to be made. I ended up cutting out my cable. I kept the internet, but I cut out the cable. Um, I cut out my unlimited plan. Right. So understanding like what is necessary, my massage envy memberships got put on pause. You got to do what you got to do. You really, really do. And then now that I'm starting to feel a little bit more established, I can set aside money for, you know, fun. I can set aside money for savings again. I can set aside money for um, and not just spend every penny on the bills. So that's tip number five. When you become a little bit more established in your uh, full-time entrepreneurship, you want to get back into investing. You want to get back into savings. You want to get back into allowing yourself to have a little bit of fun. (laughs) Yes. And a bonus tip for today, um, really understanding what works for you financially Uh, And I say that, I know that was, it sounds a little similar to tip number one, but what I mean by that is for years, even before I started a business, I knew I needed to have separation of my finances because if I see it in the account, I'm going to spend it. So my long-term savings account is at Ally Bank um, and I'm I'm not sponsored by them. I would love to be. If y'all want to holler at me, holler at your girl. But Ally Bank um, is different from traditional savings accounts. They're an online only bank. So what that means is they don't have a brick and mortar. You can't pull up at the branch or anything like that. Because of that, they're able to give you greater savings rates. Most savings accounts, you'll, you'll get 0.05% interest rate. Ally Bank gives you like 1.75% interest. That alone makes a difference. But also, because it's an online only bank, you can't just transfer because you're in the store and you're like, oh, let me just put it aside. Oh, I'll pay myself back. You won't. It takes two to three days to process a transfer. That means you're going to think real long or hard because you go to hit transfer. They're like, okay, it'll be there Thursday. Well, you done left the mall by Thursday and you get paid on Friday. So do you really need it? You know, it really makes you think twice before you hit that transfer button. So for me, it was safer. And I try not to look at the account. At this point, I look at it once a month just to check in, see where I'm at. But I try to forget how much is in there. Honestly, I do. Because I know that that does not work for me. I can't have access to the savings account because if it's too easy to transfer, I will transfer. Also, having a separate account at a whole different bank for my personal funds. So if I want to go shopping, if I want to go out to eat, if I want to go, I don't want to spend the bill money on fun stuff because you can nickel and dime yourself away. So having it at a completely separate bank makes a difference for me. This was years after trial and error. So again, you have to figure out what financial strategy works for you. So I'm going to run through those tips real quick for you. Tip number one, figure out what works for you. Tip number two, determine what stage you're in. Tip number three, um, if you are a side hustler, set aside a certain percentage of your funds every check. And as you're preparing for full-time entrepreneurship, if that's what you want, Start to make sure that the business is at a minimum paying for itself. Step number four, if you're a new full-time entrepreneur, just do what you can. Just one month at a time, okay? You'll figure it out eventually, but one month at a time. And then as you become more of an established uh, full-time entrepreneur, then get back into saving, get back into investing, get back into having a little bit of fun because you work hard. Have fun. As always, guys, make sure you drop in the comments what topics you want to talk about so that we can have those conversations. Um, Put in the comments, Tierra's tips on, okay? And we will be sure to have that conversation. Please follow me on all platforms at Tierra Nicole Riley. And don't forget to subscribe so you are the first to find out when a new episode has dropped. Thanks, guys. See you next week.